Hey, we're continuing a, a, short, a short series that's, that's kind of, I'm basing it out of the book of Ephesians. And, and, uh, um, and, and what we're talking about is obedience training, right? And, and uh, um, which makes us mutts. We've talked about that the last couple weeks, right? Is there any purebreds in the house? <laughs> no, none of us. Okay, we're all mutts. But just like, just like a, a, a mangy mutt, usually has a master. Is, isn't it the mangy mutts that are usually most loved by their masters, right? You know, and, and uh, but we're talking about, the, we talked last week about the first three chapters of the book of Ephesians, and with this summary statement, okay, sit. That's the first command, right? Isn't that kind of a basic obedience command? Yes. Right? Sit. You guys are doing that. Very good. Very good. Very good. And, and, uh, um, and, and uh, the first command, and, and I think you can summarize the first three chapters of the sixth chapter book with this idea of sit. What it talks about is this idea of resting, just sitting in God's love. That, that sit and rest in the truth that our master accepts us, okay, in spite of our imperfections, in spite of the way we are. Okay, and, 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 uh, and, and 23 times in those first three chapters, it says where we're supposed to sit. We're supposed to sit in Christ, in Him, in the Beloved. We rest and we sit in Him. Just take a big breath. You don't do anything to earn His love. You don't do anything to earn His acceptance. You just bow the knee and receive it. You ask for it and He gives it to you. That's awesome stuff, right? But He doesn't just leave you there, okay? You're not just supposed to sit there and get fat and happy, okay? And, and uh, you're supposed to be happy, but this happiness is supposed to motivate you to now heal. The idea of healing is coming alongside, right? Coming alongside your master. And what is, what is a dog expected to do when it heals? It's supposed to go wherever the master goes, right? Wherever the master leads, this is where we go. And this is what we're going to talk about today. And, and this idea that we're supposed to heal. In chapter 4, this is in chapters 4 and 5 of Ephesians. Chapter 4 starts with this theme. This, the idea is, is that in light of all the good stuff that God has given you, his love, his acceptance, and all this kind of stuff, he says, I urge you, therefore, okay, to live a life worthy of, of the, of the calling that you've received. You've, you've got all this blessing, all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. And he says, be completely humble, be gentle, be patient. And here's the, here's the line, bear with one another. Put up with each other, okay, in love. And this is the theme, the idea of love. You know, God puts up with you is the idea, okay? And so the idea is pass that on put up with other people. That's really hard sometimes. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, and, and uh, um, I mean, I'm telling you, it's hard, right? And then chapter 5 starts with this summary statement. Follow my example, okay, as dearly loved children, and heal. Walk in the way of love. Learn how to walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us, he says, and gave himself up for us. He sacrificed himself for us, live this sacrificial life. So the idea is walk, heal. Okay, um, walk next to your master, imitate him. Um, and, and where he goes in chapters four and five is the idea in all of your relationships. And he enumerates a bunch of them. He says, he talks about what you say, okay, to others, okay. He talks about your personal morality, the way you treat other people. Um, the, the, he talks about the husband-wife relationship, the parent-kid relationship, the employee-employer relationship. In all, the, in all of your relationships in your whole life, walk, heal. Walk in the way of love. Go where I lead you, stay close, okay, and wherever we go, we're going to learn how to walk in the way of love. Okay, does it make sense? And then next week we're going to talk about stand. Okay, that's, that's chapter six. Okay, and so what I want to do today, this morning, I want to take it a little different direction. We're going to, we're going to look at a different thing that Jesus talked about. And, and, uh, but what I want to do is, first of all, I want to contrast and compare different approaches to human conduct and responsibility. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is the iron rule. Okay, that's one way to, to go. The idea is might makes right, right? I'm the strong man. I'm powerful. 
So I get to do whatever it is I want to do. I will conduct myself according to what benefits me and mine. There's a lot of that in our world today, right? Right? Think of, I don't know, Russia. Okay? Think of politics, right? You know, and, and, the, and if you get in my way, this is the iron rule, you know, that's your problem. I bear no responsibility for you getting in my way. You see that in geopolitics and wars and, you know, economic do dominations and all that kind of stuff. You see it in domestic politics. You know, the idea of the strong man is the one who gets the rule, you know. And, and then you see it in the culture wars, right? The idea is that we used to be able to compromise on things, right? And now if, I, if you disagree with me, I hate you, right? Am I, am I wrong in saying that? that, that that's, that's the tone of, of much of our culture these days. And, you know, if we disagree, there is no compromise, okay? So the iron rule is one. The, the, then, there, then there's the silver rule, okay? The silver rule is this. Do not do to others what you wouldn't want them to do to you, okay? Don't do, you know, wish no, the silver rule says, I wish you no harm. Okay, it says I, I will conduct myself in a way that, that doesn't intentionally harm others, but I'm not necessarily responsible if harm finds them. That's the silver rule, okay? That's their responsibility. The, the motto is, you know, too bad, so sad, right? <laughs> and and uh, um, it forbids much, but it enjoins little, okay? And, and, it, what it, this is what it looks like in the kinder form. I'm sorry for what happened to you, but I, I don't bear any responsibility to help. You know, it, 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 we've all got our stuff, right? Um, the, in a harsher form, it would say, I would never steal money from you, you know, but if you lost it and I found it, I bear no responsibility. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers, right? You know, and, and, uh, and, and, um, and then there's the golden rule. The golden rule says, go beyond what's required. It says engage others with generosity. The golden rule says act. It says do unto others. Do things. Jesus advocated this policy for human conduct and responsibility. And, and what I want to suggest to you is this is what healing looks like in the real world. Okay, And Jesus rejected the iron-ruled approach that says I'll conduct myself according to what benefits me and mine. And if you get in my way... That's your responsibility, not mine. I'm sorry you got hurt, but you got in my way. You know? He said, go beyond the silver rule that says, you know, I, I wish no others harm, but if harm finds them, you know, too bad, so sad. It's not really my responsibility. And, and he said, take it a step farther. You know, he said his exact words were, um, do unto others, okay, whatever you would like them to do for you. Heal. This is what healing looks like, I think. And, and, and he said, this is the essence of everything that God is teaching us. This is the summation of, of all that the law and the prophets taught. Okay, And, and, and um, everything that God wants is understood by this code of personal conduct and responsibility. And, and in the context in which he said that, he was talking to a guy, a religious guy, okay, who, who was like getting kind of the right answers in his dialogue with Jesus, but then he wanted to justify his lack of love for some people, okay, certain people. And so Jesus said, hey, you know, you got to do it for everyone. Guys, that's really hard, okay? I mean, uh, I have people in my life I don't want to do that for. I'm just being straight up honest. You know, it's really hard. And, 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 uh, and, and, and then what happens is, Jesus, I'm going to share for you, it's recorded in, in Luke's account of Jesus' life. Jesus reinforced this idea through a story. He used a story to communicate the same lesson. Maybe you've heard of it. It's called the story of the Good Samaritan. You heard of that story? You can go like this if you have. If you don't, it's okay. okay. And what it does, this story does, it's an interesting story. It exposes the dangers of religious pride. Religious people couldn't be proud, right? Yeah. It cuts through attitudes of racial superiority. And it eliminates self-justifying hatreds. Okay? And, 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 and here's how he did this. 
he, it, 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 you, it, it's hard to overemphasize how radical it was that he made the Samaritan the hero of the story. Okay, um, it, 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 most, most people of his day viewed Samaritans as being kind of racially and religiously inferior. They, they considered him to be kind of disgusting. Okay, and, and he was a Samaritan. He's going to be the hero of Jesus' story. And, and there were a group of people that were viewed as kind of like ra racial and religious half-breeds if you will, um, they, they, they were looked down upon almost universally. People would intentionally avoid interactions with Samaritans. Samaritans lived in like this one bordering region of Israel, and, and, and they would avoid travel if they could potentially do it into that territory. They didn't even like going to where they lived, okay? They didn't like going through the place. Okay, here's a story. It says a Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. And he starts with an iron rule part of the story, okay? They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. So this, this, this Jewish man, you know, who was a cultural and religious insider, okay, was traveling on a, basically a 20-mile journey through these kind of craggy ravines and stuff. It was kind of, kind of good, a lot of places for these guys to hide, the bandits to hide. And, and, and he got jumped by a group of criminals who lived by the iron rule philosophy of life. And they said, we want what you have, okay, and we're going to take it. There's more of us than you. We're stronger than you, okay? And they beat him up. They stripped up, even stripped down his clothes and left him half dead beside the side of the road. And, and so he begins with this, this raw and graphic example of iron rule, right? Exert your power, you know, demand what you want, take what you can. This philosophy of these criminals, right? And so this guy is injured. Okay, and then what happens is some folks come along who live by the silver ruled philosophy. They come upon this poor guy, and, and the silver rule is superior for sure to the iron rule, okay, but its deficiency in the golden rule is found in, in a more passive attitude and approach to human conduct and responsibility. It says this by chance, a religious leader, a priest, okay, came along, and when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed by him. You know, I'm so sorry for what happened to you, but I don't want to get involved, right? And then a, a temple assistant, okay, somebody that worked in the, the church, so to speak, okay, um, walked over and looked at him lying there, so he at least got close to the guy, and then he just said, I, I don't want to get involved. And he just passed by the other side. And Now, no doubt these guys were horrified by the scene, right? You know, to find a bloodied, half dead, you know, victim of, of uh, violent crime is no fun, right? You know, and, and, but the silver ruled approach to human responsibility and conduct says what you do not wish to happen to you, do not inflict on others, okay? And so in other words, you know, certainly do not live an unprincipled, iron ruled life, right? That's what these guys would agree with, right? Don't commit acts of violence to unjustly steal what doesn't belong to you. Don't inflict harm, okay, because you wouldn't want someone to do that to you. You see, the iron, the silver rule, you know, prohibits certain conduct, but here's the thing, here's its deficiency. It doesn't prescribe proactive virtual actions, virtuous actions, I mean to say. Um, the silver rule forbids certain behaviors, but it doesn't demand generosity. The silver rule, you know, allows someone to say, I would never do that to that poor guy, you know, but it doesn't require me to render aid. Does that make sense? You know, um, the silver rule is limiting, okay, uh, and, and, but it's kind of negative in its outlook. It, it says don't engage certain behaviors, it, but the silver rule, what it does is it opens the possibility of some, someone justifying their inaction, to not go in there and try to help somebody with excuses like, you know, I'm so, that poor guy, I'm so sorry for what happened to him, but I don't want to get involved, right? That's so wrong, but let's get out of here, you know? 
The silver rule doesn't demand positive correction, corrective action. It simply requires restraint. And then, and here's where the superiority of the golden rule is seen. The golden rule is positive in orientation. It says do certain things, right? Go beyond what is required. You know, engage others with generosity. And, and it, pres it prescribes action, okay? And, and it doesn't just limit what you should do. It instructs you on what to do, okay? It says do unto others. Do unto others what you would want them to to do to you. If you were laying beat up, half naked, half dead on the side of the road, you'd want help, mm -hmm. right? You'd want someone to help you and not just be horrified by you and, 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 and moving on. And, you know, so Jesus begins this story with examples of iron rule, the criminals, and then the silver rule, the respectable people, okay, who don't want to get involved and then Jesus introduces the golden rule. And this is where the hero of the story shows up. And he's a golden ruled kind of guy. And, and, but a guy that's religiously and culturally, you know, uh, the, the religiously and culturally respectable people, you know, look down on the Samaritan. Okay. They look down on people from his, from his background and, 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 and belief system and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and Jesus is going to make the point that the silver rule respectable people were in the eyes of God actually the inferior ones, not the Samaritan, okay? And, and, and their passive kind of excuse-making approach to human conduct and responsibility is going to be outshined by this golden-ruled Samaritan. And, 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 and what I want to suggest to you is, this is what we're going to see here, this is what healing looks like. This is what it looks like in the real world. It says that this, then a despised Samaritan came along. And when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. You know, sometimes you judge people by their outer deal, by the labels that we stick on them, right? In, in the world, the world sticks on them and stuff. And you don't necessarily know what's inside, right? And, and so the Samaritan comes along, someone who's got a label of yuck on him, and he sees this guy, and what we learn is, wow, he has, he's full of compassion, actually. And, 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 uh, um, and he goes over to the guy, and the Samaritan tended to his wounds. It says that he soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine, and, and, and then he bandaged him up. He rendered aid. And, and then he put the man, he put him in his car, put him on his donkey, okay? He said, come on, I'm going to get you someplace safe where you can get healed up. And, and so he took him to a hotel. He took him to an inn. And, and he didn't just like, get him a room. He went and spent the night with the guy in the inn. They shared a room. And all night long, he took care of him. The Samaritan invested in this guy. And he didn't just throw money at him. He got personally involved with him. He cared for him all night. What I want to suggest to you, Ephesians chapter 5, this is what healing looks like. This is what walking in the way of love looks like. This is living a life worthy of your calling. This is what it looks like. Okay, God did the same thing for us. And, and, and so he expects us to now pass that on, pay it forward. And, and so it says, in verse, it says this, the next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins. So he was going to move on, but he gave the, guy some mo the, the innkeeper some money and he said, hey, I want you to take care of this guy. Please take care of him. If his bill runs higher than this, than these two silver coins, I'll be traveling through here again. Next time I come through, I'll make it up. We'll make it right. Okay, I'm going to take care, I want, I'm going to take care of you as well. And the innkeeper seemed to understand in Jesus' story that here was a guy with a strong moral compass, right? You know, and, and a man of his word, a good man who happened to be a Samaritan. Right? And, and, and the Samaritan trusted that the innkeeper would do the right thing with the monies that he gave him. Right? You know, and, and the Samaritan wasn't, wasn't concerned about an accounting, you know, so that, so that how the money was spent so he, he could kind of collect change if there was something left over. That's not what he, what he said. He assured the innkeeper that if he spent more than he was entrusted with, okay, this golden ruled Samaritan, when he came back through again, he'd make it right, you know. And, and the innkeeper trusted him to do so in this story. And then ending his lesson, Jesus asked the guy, 
who, who had wanted to justify his lack of love for certain people, for some people, okay, by asking which neighbors, who am I supposed to love? You know, is, is it everybody? And, 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 and Jesus said, he said, now which of these three, the priest, the temple assistant, or the Samaritan, would you say, was a neighbor to the man who'd been attacked by the bandits? And the man had to reply, the one who showed him mercy. He couldn't even say the word Samaritan, right? You know, and, and uh, um, the one who showed him mercy, you know, and, and, and Jesus said, right. Now heal. He said, go and do the same. That's healing, right? And, and uh, um, you know, and so, he's, you know, this idea of healing is powerful, I think. This idea of healing is, is you're coming up alongside the master. And, and <laughs> sometimes, you see, sometimes you see dogs walking people, right? You know, and, and uh, um, they're, they're, oh, you know, they're, they're pulling them all over the place, right? And stuff, and, and that's not healing, okay? That's an animal that hasn't learned how to heal, okay? A healing animal is the one that, that comes alongside its master and trusts the master to lead and, 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 and goes wherever the master leads, right? And, and, and sometimes the way you're going to get led, it's going to lead you to a place where you, you're going to be challenged now, you know, to live a life worthy of the calling that you've received, being humble, gentle, patient, putting up with each other, okay, in love, learning how to do that. God puts up with us. He says, I'm going to show you how to do this. And this is what, lo what it looks like to follow my example. He, like he says in Ephesians 5, dearly loved children, walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. And he applies this in, in many directions, this idea of walking the way of love, healing, you know, staying close and stuff. And all your relationships, sometimes what you say you know, I, I, I say stupid stuff all the time, okay? You know, um, you're, you're, the way you treat others, you know, the way you treat your, your husband or your wife, you know, if you got them, you know, the, a kid, you know, um, a, an employee or your employer, you know. He says, listen, listen, there's a bigger picture here. Live like an obedient mutt, okay? Come alongside, heal. Walk close to me. Heal. You know, wherever I lead, wherever we go, we're going to try to learn how to walk in the way of love. You see, Jesus imagined a world. He imagined a world that was filled with people who were governed by the golden rule. Wouldn't that be a great place? You know, wouldn't that be a great place? People who prayed this prayer he, that he taught us. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on, on earth as it is in heaven living by the golden rule. People who did more than just merely express that intention, okay, but actually, you know, put their energies and resources to doing his will on earth as it is in heaven. Imagine a world where, where, where people were willing to rise up, you know, and proactively mitigate the carnage, okay, that's caused by those who conduct themselves towards others with the iron rule. You know, imagine a world where people live made up for the deficiencies of, of those whose sense of responsibility is just simply governed by the limitations that are inherent in the silver rule, okay, of human conduct. You know, Jesus said, heal. He said, you go now. You know, you go and do the same. Show love, show mercy, you know, to those who are suffering. Even to those you disagree with. Wow. That would be so radical. Okay, imagine a country governed by people who are just concerned about doing right things all the time for other people, you know, even to their opponents, even to their, their ideological enemies. Imagine a world where Jesus asks his followers to pro proactively influence, you know, you know uh, to go beyond what's required, to, to engage others with generosity, to act, to do unto others whatever's required. Would you pray with me? Jesus, we thank you that you imagined this kind of world, that, you, that you, you gave us these values, where the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets would find practical fulfillment. 
We pray you'd keep us from false belief. The false belief that an iron-ruled outlook can conduct, it can, can, can accomplish your righteousness in a confused and fallen world. We help, help us to believe you when you tell us that if we can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and we have all faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, we're actually nothing. Lord, help us to believe you when you tell us that if we give all we possess to the poor and give over our bodies to great sacrifices, but do not have love, we gain nothing. Lord, our simple prayer is, teach us to heal. In your name, amen.